From the Bergstrom Court at Minnehaha Academy in Minneapolis, we welcome you to another presentation of high school basketball. It's the last regular season game of the year for the Minnehaha Academy girls team as they host the St. Peter's Saints. Minnehaha coming in at 15 and six, St. Peter at 17 and four. Greetings everyone, I'm Mike Peden. Thank you for joining us. And the common bond between both head coaches, they were looking forward to this game because it would help them prepare for their section playoff push, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. For Minnehaha Academy, they like St. Peter. They say they're a nice fit because it will replicate what they would expect in the state tournament when you usually play a first round op opponent you don't have a chance to see because of geographical distance, especially in the lower classes. For St. Peter, they were looking for a challenge against a Metro school. They've won 10 of their last 11 games, which includes a win over Jordan when they were ranked number nine in class 2A, but they wanted to get a sense of what the Metro would offer since odds are if you're gonna win the state tournament, you're gonna to have to go through at least one Metro school. Both teams are primarily led by one player. Minnehaha Academy has Nicole Niffer. Her scoring has dropped as of late, but more teams have been keying on her. And for St. Peter, it's Taylor Raymond, and she gets some help with Olivia Haas. But beyond that, not neither team too deep, so it may come down to who can contain the best player on both sides. Speaking of containment, let's take a look at the keys to the game. For St. Peter, it's primarily about turnovers. They want to commit 18 or less. They noted that when they commit 20 turnovers or more, they have a lot of trouble. But they like to play a lot of possessions, but they also want to take control of the ball, as most teams do. That's their primary key. For Minnehaha Academy, because they haven't seen St. Peter yet, for Minnehaha Academy, they want to push the pace. They want to create some confusion for their opponent. And they'll want to limit production, as I mentioned, from their top players. Again, with neither team having a chance to see each other, most of this game will be improvised in terms of strategy. Starting lineup is coming up in a moment. You're watching High School Basketball. Number one guard. Welcome back to Bergstrom Court. Let's take a quick look at the starting five. For the visiting St. Peter Saints, number one, Logan Retzlaff. The 5'3 sophomore guard. Number three, Kelsey Carpenter. The 5'7 senior forward. Number four, Lydia Kennedy, the 5'6 senior guard. Number 33, Taylor Raymond, 5'10", senior forward. And number 50, Olivia Haas, 6'2", sophomore forward. For Minnehaha, they'll start number one, Chloe Gunderson, 5'8", senior guard. Number 24, Sarah Kaminsky, 5'8", freshman guard. Number 31, Nicole Nipper, 5'11", senior forward. Number 32, Rachel Warren, 5'7", senior guard. And number 55, Maddie Johnson, 6'2", senior forward. As we mentioned, the players to watch on both ends. For Minnehaha, it's going to be Nicole Nipper, 19.3 points per game, even though she hasn't scored much lately. Still a threat on offense. And for St. Peter, their top player, Taylor Raymond, who leads the team in scoring and rebounds. Haas is their primary blocker. But as we mentioned in the open, it may come down to execution and who can ad-lib best to pull off their strategy. We mentioned this is Minnehaha's last regular season game. Normally they get three more, but the Tri-Metro Conference decided to scrap the East and West Division and add a conference tournament. So what will happen is the top eight teams in the Tri-Metro Conference standings, Minnehaha included, will play a best of three, or I should say a three-game tournament, eight-team format, like you'd see in any other standard eight-team playoff bracket. But here's the catch. The first two games will be hosted at the alternate site from when the first two schools met. So in Minnehaha's case, they will play St. Croix Lutheran here because those two played at St. Croix Lutheran earlier in the year. We'll talk more about that as the game goes on, but everyone playing guinea pig and a few <laughs> caveats to explain. St. Peter wearing the white jerseys, Minnehaha wearing the red, St. Peter with the first possession. And here's a quick look at Taylor Raymond and she doesn't waste any time getting on the board. Averaging just about 20 points a game. Launching a three, sinking it. 
is Sarah Kaminsky, the ninth grade guard. St. Peter with possession. Josh Thoreau told me Kaminsky has unlimited range from the perimeter, and we may see some of that throughout. St. Peter backing off. Again, neither school has seen each other play. So we'll see both teams implement their styles until they can get comfortable. Carpenter over to Retzloff. Back over to Carpenter. St. Peter located in Nicolette County, not to be confused with Nicolette Avenue, near the Mankato area. It will stay with Minnehaha, or St. Peter. And that's Mike Carnes, one of the officials. He is also the assistant athletic director at Richfield High School and also does some work at Gophers games. Retzloff steps on the line, so is St. Peter turnover. St. Peter was expecting Minnehaha to be tough. And oddly enough, here's Kaminsky draining another three. She's up to six. Oddly enough, both teams have had strong records all year, but neither have been in the top ten throughout the season. St. Peter can't counter. That was Carpenter and the putback by Olivia Haas. That's her primary offensive strategy. 6-4 in favor of the Red Hawks. Nicole Nipper tried and reverse layup, unsuccessful, and the rebound to Taylor Raymond. Raymond driving, will shoot free throws. The foul will be charged to Maddie Johnson. We mentioned Raymond just averaging under 20 points a game. Also averaging just under eight rebounds a game, so solid on both those facets. Makes both free throws, and we're tied at six with 15.40 left in the first half. Nicole Nipper can't get rid of the ball, and me, haha, -ha, gets a blessing in disguise. The ball was deflected off St. Peter. And so Minnie Aha -ha will get another 10 seconds to move the ball forward. St. Peter again pressing. Minnie Aha -ha won't fall for it this time. Kaminsky, top of the key. Heat check, no good. But Warren is there for the offensive rebound. And the skip pass is good to Chloe Gunderson. Gunderson for two. Gunderson on the board. Here's Retzloff. Bounced off Gunderson. Into the hands of Carpenter. Carpenter trying to weave through traffic. Bounces out to Raymond. And now Raymond with the reverse layup and the finish. Raymond with six points. It's 8-8. Eight, eight. Gunderson to Kaminsky. Feeding to Warren. Nipper, long three, short. Rebound, Retzloff. And she's on the run. Bounce pass over to Raymond. Got it. Gunderson gets hacked. Taylor Raymond already has eight points to match Minnehaha's total, but not much support yet. I'm sure that will come with time, though. Still a long way to go, and as the game extrapolates, we should see the averages play out. Rachel Warren with a mid-range put-down. Ten-all. 
On the drive, no good. Haas can't get the ball back. Rebound, Kaminsky. Gunderson out to Kaminsky. She'll try again. It's missed her last two from three-point range. And getting the underhand layup is Retzloff for her first basket. Minnehaha Academy won the state tournament championship in Class 2A back in 2010, defeating Bram, lost in the championship round to Bram the very next year. Reached the quarterfinals last year, but met Providence Academy, the 2A champion, and Minnehaha uh, was eliminated in the quarterfinal round, so to speak. Maddie Johnson fouled. She will shoot free throws, averaging 7.4 points per game. Her season high is 15. Started slow, but really coming along for the Red Hawks. Splits there. Haas with the cleanup. Haas up to four, St. Peter leading by three. Gunderson in traffic, off the heel, and too many white jerseys there. Haas double teamed. Nipper with the deflection. We'll have our first substitution for St. Peter. It's number 10, Kirsten Karlsrud. St. Peter not very deep. You'll see maybe eight players at most. Retzlaff couldn't hit the long range two. And Minnehaha a little while, but Warren cleans things up. Gunderson too high in the floater. And the rebound by Karlsrud. Minnehaha's, Minnehaha Academy has qualified for the last five consecutive Class 2A state tournaments. They had a brief run in 3A. St. Peter qualified in 2011. They were knocked out by Providence Academy in the quarterfinal round. And the last couple of years, as a backcourt violation is called in St. Peter, in their section, they've got to deal with New Richland HEG. And the prodigy that is Carly Wagner. Nipper for three. Bullseye. Foul and one. Warren with the steal off the inbound play and a three point play opportunity. She can hit a lot of big threes as well, but can play inside too. Averaging is 8.3 points per game, can't get the three point play, but. Minnehaha gets a quick five-point burst, and now they're up by two. Raymond, the skip pass is intercepted by Kaminsky. Minnehaha with numbers. Kaminsky for the layup. Wipe it away, a charge is called. Minnehaha, to get back there, they've got to deal with a tough, couple of tough foes. Minneapolis Washburn figures to be their strongest section foe. St. Paul Humboldt could give them a run. And as we mentioned over in St. Peter's section, section two, New Richland HEG is going to be their biggest obstacle with Carly Wagner, the verbal commit to Minnesota. Warren. Pump fakes the three, drives instead, and draws the blocking foul. <laughs> Gracia Gilreath going in the game for Minnehaha, number 15. And once again, Minnehaha Academy, that basket was to Nipper, but Minnehaha Academy making quick work off inbounds plays. Raymond missing the jumper. 
St. Peter can't save it in time. Minnieha wanted to push the pace and at least off inbounds plays, they are certainly creating confusion. Here's Johnson, can't get it, gets her own rebound. Short on the putback attempt, rebound to Kennedy. Emily Carpenter in the game for St. Peter, number 23. Here's Kelsey Carpenter going to Karlsruhe. And a near steal by the Red Hawks, but Gilreath picked it up just as the ball touched the out of bounds line, but you can't fault the Red Hawks for that. Here's Carpenter, swish. Kelsey Carpenter with her first field goal. Kelsey Carpenter averaging just over 10 points per game. Gilreath on the drive, can't get the bounce. Offensive rebound, and the cleanup by Lily Groth, number 20. St. Peter pushing, picked off by Kaminsky. Nipper, open, all by herself. See you later. Timeout, St. Peter, Minnehaha Academy, up 22 to 16. Thanks to an 11-2 run. Nicole Nipper scored the fast break bucket. Really blossomed in the last couple of years. Playing better in an all-around capability and her biggest problem is she is, excels at so many sports, she's not sure what she wants to continue with, with in college. Naturally, Josh Thoreau would like her to continue in basketball, and a few of the smaller schools are looking at her, and that would also allow her to compete in other sports. But she is getting a look from the University of San Diego for track. Nipper will be playing in the All-Star Series, hosted by the Coaches Association, a member of the Class 2A roster. Always a nice honor. And Nipper really likes to run, a, really likes frozen yogurt and wants to run a marathon. One of her goals, as we mentioned, runs cross country and varsity track. Before then, she was the number one tennis player in middle school. Also the number one golfer. Had to give up golf for track and had to give up tennis for cross country. One of the few players who can excel at multiple sports and there just isn't enough time in the schedule to fit them all in. Carpenter pulls up, can't get bank. Rebound Kaminsky, finds Gunderson again on the fast break for Minnehaha and Gunderson scores. The run is now 13-2. Haas hoping to put an end to that. She's up to six. Here comes Gilreath. Hands it off to Kaminsky. Uh-oh. No three-pointer. And dead ball rebound to St. Peter. The city of St. Peter. Population of about 11,000. Gunderson will be called for the foul. As we mentioned, located in Nicollet County near the Mankato area. Home to Gustavus Adolphus College, the Division III member of the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. Marta Springer in the game for St. Peter. St. Peter, home to five former governors in the state of Minnesota. And Olivia Haas putting two more points on her ballot. Brad brings her up to eight. And St. Peter getting a little bit of a breather now. And an offensive foul is called. I believe Gilreath will be tagged for the elbow. And she is. Oh. 
Emily Carpenter over to Kelsey. Here's Raymond. Losing the handle almost, but gets it off to Kelsey Carpenter. Can't hit the mid-range J. Haas, no cleanup. Rebound Kaminsky. Minnehaha on the run again. Warren threads it to Nipper, but she can't finish. That was a great pass, but Nipper just didn't have the best of positioning. Carpenter thought about a three. Raymond tried to bounce it over to Emily Carpenter. Jump ball, possession arrow, favors Minnehaha Academy. St. Peter has won 10 of their last 11 games to get to this mark. We mentioned Minnehaha doing pretty well. Neither team has played a huge assortment of ranked opponents. Minnehaha has only played their conference foes who have been ranked in class 2A and 3A. Providence Academy number one in 2A. De La Salle number two in 3A by virtue of Fergus Falls having an undefeated record more than anything else. Minnehaha will get possession. St. Peter has only played two ranked opponents. Mankato East in 3A earlier in the year. That was a loss. And the victory over Jordan, which we mentioned in the open. Nipper, three-pointers too strong. Warren with the rebound. Gets rid of it before she travels. And Kaminsky throws it away. Carl's Root back in the game for St. Peter. And she gets the touch. Poke from Nipper, picked up by Raymond. No backcourt violation, obviously. Raymond weaves to the baseline, finds Haas on the escape, and Haas is the first player to reach double digits. Kaminsky pulls up, in and out. Rebound Emily Carpenter and St. Peter has a chance to tie here. They've scored the last six points. 6.50 remaining in the first half. Haas in trouble and Nipper on the run again. And another fast break empty. Blocking foul is called as Raymond was tripped up, I believe, by Nipper. And that's exactly what the foul is going to be. Fouls on Nipper, the first team in the game, number four, Kenny. Fifteen footer short from Carl's Rude. Scramble and Carl's Rude gets the offensive rebound. Raymond under duress gets rid of it. Haas, short range, short. Maddie Johnson with the rebound. Nipper. Struggling as of late. And another steal, thanks to a poke. Chloe Gunderson with the finish. Gunderson up to six. Foul is called. Gunderson, who scored the last basket, got a Pioneer Press Athlete of the Week commendation for hitting 20 of 24 shots in a three game span, very intelligent with her shot selection. I can't tell you what her shooting percentage is now, but 
Josh Thoreau really appreciates the amount of high percentage shots Gunderson takes. Very smart on the floor. Three pointer from the corner by Logan Retzloff. And it's a one point game, 26 25. Nipper with the answer. No. An offensive rebound. Minnehaha gets another possession. That's Jennifer Morozik. Traveling violation is called. And a traveling violation right back. Logan Retzloff got herself tripped up. Five minutes to go in the first half. Kaminsky, offensive foul on Johnson and she took a hard hit herself. That puts the Red Hawks in the penalty but because it's a team control foul, no free throws are awarded. And they will send Growth back in to relieve Johnson. She got a little banged up there, but hopefully it won't be out for long. Kennedy, too strong. Rebound, Morozik. There she is again, launching. Too strong. Nipper with the offensive rebound, but double team, so she finds Kaminsky. This is perhaps some, one of the more quiet crowds I've seen in a game. And we're talking about a Minneapolis school that's not too far from Lake Street. St. Peter playing a zone and Minnehaha settling down. Very patient here in this possession. Now Kaminsky likes her look. Bullseye. Timeout called by Minnehaha Academy as they have a 29-25 lead with 3.51 left. And while we're on a timeout, we profile Nicole Nipper extensively and let's take a look at some of the St. Peter athletes including Taylor Raymond the leading scorer very superstitious about what she wears if she plays good in a particular item of clothing she will continue wearing it throughout the season but for those of you concerned about hygiene she does wash it also takes part in volleyball softball the St. Peter Student Council and choir According to St. Peter head coach Bob Southworth, Raymond, very adept at anticipating where the ball is going to be after a shot, can score inside and outside, can post up and hit a three-pointer periodically. St. Peter will host a lot of boys girls double headers because of where they are. And Southworth told me every time they host one, the gym is packed. In the smaller cities, oh, here's a full court press of off on offense from St. Peter. Carl's room with the basket. So the Saints pushing the pace prudently. 29 27 the score. Pass deflected and stolen by Carl's room. Raymond doesn't have breakaway speed, but dumps off to Retzloff. She can't hit it. Board goes to Karlsrud. Kelsey Carpenter, no. Raymond, blocked from behind. But St. Peter with another chance. Southworth wants a screen for Kennedy. St. Peter can't establish one. But they still have time, and they're going to back off here. Raymond! Just as we were talking about on cue, she hits a three-pointer. And the last time out, we said, will periodically go beyond the arc. And St. Peter takes their first lead. Since 
2-0 in the opening minutes. Nipper with a drive. She's up to seven. Nipper crossed the 1,000 point threshold a few weeks ago. Jump ball, St. Peter with the possession arrow. Haas and Carpenter going back in. Haas beats her coverage and scores. Post up on growth rather easily there. Nipper driving again, rejected. Growth picks it up. Kaminsky drains the jumper. Kaminsky leading in points right now for the Red Hawks with 11. Carpenter left alone. Mid range. Short rebound. Gilreath. Gilreath, coast to coast, can't complete it. Kaminsky can't connect. The foul is charged to St. Peter. They still had two to give. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. Foul goes to Raymond. That is her first personal. Here's Kaminsky again. Has the hot hand, but a little too strong on that runner. Here's Emily Carpenter bringing the ball. Raymond swarmed, so kicks out to her outlet. Three points successful. Lydia Kennedy with her first field goal. Less than a minute to play. Minnehaha not concerned about the clock right now. They may run it out here. They just want to get a high quality shot if they can. Kaminsky going to growth. And Gilreath can't hit it. Grove losing the battle for the ball and St. Peter will have a chance to extend their lead here with 15 seconds and counting. Haas. With growth, Haas can't post up. Miniha with time. Not much though, and that's how the first half will end. St. Peter leading 35-33 thanks to a three-pointer from Lydia Kennedy on the last basket of the first half. Raymond using the defense's respect of her to St. Peter's advantage. We'll pause for a few minutes, review the first half numbers and analyze other trends for you and come back to complete our presentation of high school basketball right here on TSB Television. Welcome back to Bergstrom Court at the campus of Minnehaha Academy in Minneapolis where we continue our coverage of high school girls basketball. I'm Mike Beaton and I'm presenting this match between St. Peter and Minnehaha Academy, a pair of 2A foes. St. Peter leads 35-33. After the first half, let's take a quick look at the numbers for you. Leading the way, Olivia Haas with 12 points. Taylor Raymond has 11 points. Logan Retzloff has five. And a couple of players with two after that. Mini Haha led by Sarah Kaminsky with 11 points. Nicole Nipper with seven. And Chloe Gunderson with six. Those are your notables. Warren has four for the Red Hawks. So St. Peter's primary Anchors of offense doing their work. 
Minnehaha getting a little bit of help from Kaminsky, but I'm sure they'd like to create a little more chance in Nipper's direction. So this Tri-Metro Conference tournament that Minnehaha is about to take part in, we mentioned 18 bracket, got to win three games to win the championship. They will host St. Croix Lutheran, the four seed, on Friday because Minnehaha played St. Croix Lutheran at their location in the last meeting, and so that's how the first two rounds will work. Wherever the first meeting was, the second meeting will be held at the alternate site. If Minnehaha wins, for that reason, they would host De La Salle next Tuesday. And the kicker to all of this is the championship game will be hosted at the highest seeded team to advance. So if things go according to form and De La Salle and Providence meet up with each other, Providence would end up playing De La Salle twice at their location as a result. Every Tri-Metro Conference team played each other once to determine the seedings. And so that will open up, that actually opened up a few slots for non-conference games and also allows some of the top Tri-Metro teams to play each other rather than beating up on St. Paul and Mounts Park Academy several times over. St. Peter wearing the white jerseys, Minnehaha wearing the red jerseys. St. Peter has no concern about tri uh, conference tournaments in their schedule. They play three more games after this and they move on to section play. St. Peter in the South Central Conference. Olivia Haas can't make the most out of her broken play but getting in there for the offensive board is Logan Retzloff. <laughs> 17 minutes left. Kennedy can't hit the three that time. Hit one to end the first half. Raymond with the finger roll. Raymond up to a baker's dozen. Gilreath on the drive. Nothing doing. St. Peter with possession. Warren not on the floor to start this half for Miniha Academy. Interesting because she has more points. Foul was before the shy. Well, that was a St. Peter foul, so that's why there was no, no basket. It's on Haas. So an offensive foul, and Minnehaha will get possession back. Gilreath out to Nipper. Here's Gunderson. She's left alone. Can't hit it from 17. Haas with the rebound. Kelsey Carpenter backing off. St. Peter will do a lot of camps with the elementary school students throughout the season, not just basketball, but throughout the calendar seasons too. Bob Southwood mentioned the St. Peter program. They believe in building bonds with the old and the young, the teens and the kids. We've got a foul off, and that will send Gunderson to the line. This will be her first trip. Gunderson averaging 9.3 points per game. We mentioned earlier, Pioneer Press Athlete of the Week nod. Outstanding at getting steals and disrupting overall on defense. And on top of that, a 32 ACT score, which will get her into some Highly prestigious honors programs. Gunderson splits. For the curious, the maximum score you can get on an ACT is 36, and the average score is about 21. I'll let you simmer on that for a moment. Southworth getting the bailout timeout call as Lydia Kennedy was trapped by a double team in the backcourt, but St. Peter's still leading by three. So let's take another look at one of St. Peter's athletes. We profiled Raymond the last time. Let's take a look at Olivia Haas, the sophomore center. Haas really loves cooking. Anything from homemade chocolate mousse to a full meal. 
So culinary skills maybe in her future. Also takes part in volleyball and North Tartan AAU and youth group. I'm assuming that is with a church or another local organization. Strictly an inside player, but getting more comfortable with her back to the basket and can get it down in the drop step. And for her size, has some vertical. Here's Emily Carpenter. Tried the skip, but Minnie Ha got in the passing lane for the steal. Gilreath has yet to score. There's Nipper. Gunderson on the line. That goes in, but it's a comical note there. Gunderson up to nine points, but I spoke with Josh Thoreau yesterday. He said that is the worst place he wants to see his players on offense, on the three-point line. But they get the steal and have a chance to take the lead here. Nipper for three. Foul, count it! That's where Thurow wants his athletes to be if they shoot from range. And it was a three-pointer from Nipper two years ago against Sox Center that became the game-winning shot in the state tournament that established the confidence she exhibits now. A four-point play for Nicole Nipper. And a steal off the inbound play. That's the third time Minnehaha has made a move off the inbound pass. Johnson, out to Nipper again, long three, pure! Another steal by Nipper, she's going to the line. A back-to-back -back sequence a triple and steal. <laughs> Nipper's season high for the Curious is 32. She was in the top 10 in the state scoring race for most of the season, dropped out after a few rough outings as again defense as opposing opponents drew up more of their strategies to target her. But how about that? Foul, and that will send Carlsruhe to the line, but still impressive run by Nipper. Scoring the last eight points for Minnehaha Academy. Now we're gonna get a look at Kirsten Carlsruhe. Not a huge factor on the stat sheet. But Karlsruhe is top of her class academically. Makes both here and could very well be valedictorian when she graduates later this spring. Nothing spectacular, but performs well in the intangibles in the words of Bob Southworth. And sometimes it's all you need from a bench player. Nipper, that was a heat check, didn't fall. We saw that from Kaminsky as well. And Gunderson would have had an escape route, but Thoreau called timeout. He had four in the pocket, so not a bad time to use it. 44-39, Minnehaha leads St. Peter. Thoreau was one of the largest proponents of the conference tournament, and so was Providence Academy, who played under such a format when they were a member of the Minnesota Christian Athletic Association. But outside of this impending conference tournament that we'll see results with in this experiment. Recently, the team hosted a freshman JV tournament among the Tri-Metro schools, and the money raised from that tournament was donated to relief efforts in Haiti. Kaminsky finds Nipper, and Nipper faked, lost the handle, so, and double dribble violation. And you see the progression of events 
from a single mistake. Nipper had a baseline drive opportunity, but a mishandle took that away. And now you've got a runner from Retzloff. She's up to seven. Gilreath takes it herself. Yes! Gilreath scores. Once again, Minnieha using their pressure, and it falls right back into the hands of Taylor Raymond. But a sigh of relief, metaphorically speaking, for the Saints. And Bob Southworth calling timeout. He had three left, now it's two. Once again, the trapping by both teams forcing the two coaches who haven't seen each other all season to add lib 13.01 left. Well, as we mentioned, the team gets involved in the philosophy of training younger kids in camps with multiple sports, basketball, soccer, baseball, you name it. And Southworth wanted to continue this philosophy because he mentioned as the players get to the varsity level, it can be a lot more stressful. And as a pregame activity for home games, they will have one of the youth teams that the girls mentor come out and get announced similar to their starting five. And they'll also play an exhibition scrimmage at halftime. And when these younger kids score a basket, the crowd goes nuts. And he says that helps his players remember that the game is supposed to be fun. I know a lot of kids want to win a state title. They want to augment the trophy mantle, get some TV time on channel 45. But the game is about having fun and using athletics as a platform to cultivate skills that will be useful later in your career. Karlsruhe got the push off, no foul called, and she can't plink, get a plinko bounce in, and now St. Peter commits the foul. As the old saying goes, ball don't lie. At least that's how many haha -ha views it. I'm sure St. Peter has a different mindset. Gilreath finding Johnson. Maddie Johnson going to the line. 7.4 points per game as we mentioned. Has yet to score a field goal. Six two senior forward. And with Minnieha knowing they will host at least one more game this season, their senior night will take place this Friday where they will give a proper send off to the senior class, a customary tradition among all schools. Johnson splitting again that time. 12 27 left in the first half and we haven't seen a team open up a sizable lead. We've seen a lot of short runs. Carpenter missing. Haas with the rebound. Can't get the bounce, but free throw's coming. We mentioned Haas, the team leader in blocks with 29. Averages 10 points a game exactly for the Saints. Rebounding. About half that number, about five and a half boards a game for the sophomore forward. Ha splits. Nipper again. No good. Never up to 15 points uh, for those of you keeping track. And another entry violation by Minnehaha resulting in a turnover. The 
Red Hawks have almost a radar-like quality to the entry passes. Kaminsky back to Nipper. There's Kaminsky again. Thoreau says she has the potential. He doesn't like to make those kinds of speculations too often, but has the potential. Miss the three-pointer to become one of the to become the best player in Minnehaha Academy history. And this is a school that has quite a bit of it. They may not have some of the star players. Maddie Johnson posting up and scoring. And sometimes when you play aggressive on the inbound using the full court trap, you're prone to getting fouls. That's on Kaminsky, her third personal. And not counting that foul, Thoreau says Kaminsky is further along with her basketball development than Rachel Hansen was. Reach and foul called on Minnehaha. That's on Gunderson, she's up to three. And this is something Minnehaha will have to note as play continues. St. Peter out of fouls to give. That's off of St. Peter. And once again, Minnehaha disrupting the passing lane and forcing a turnover. We said Minnehaha may not have the, the big names in high school. Nipper can't hit at that time. She's been on and off throughout, but again, that eight point burst has proven the difference in this game so far. Nipper trying for the steal. Minnehaha getting aggressive again. And now another foul is called. Mike Karn says Taylor Raymond was bumped. The foul is Johnson's third personal and Minnehaha with three players at three. And Johnson goes out and here we see Rachel Warren. Raymond makes both. 49-44, game not over by a long shot. Plenty of time left in this one. Nipper thought about a three this time and loses the ball. She got pulled from behind. Carl's Rue with the steal. And Retzloff is disrupted by Kaminsky. Gilreath, she gets bamped. Nothing to worry about there though. That was a tough shot, but Warren is there on the back end. And she'll launch a low arcing three, but that goes in and out. Rebound to Raymond. Finding Haas on the long skip pass, and oh my goodness, Haas might want that shot back. We've seen a lot of bunnies miss the hole. As we mentioned, this often happens in state tournament games when you play schools you haven't faced all year. You're not sure how they'll respond in the paint, in the perimeter. Double dribble violation on Nipper. And so you get jitters that you may not have against conference opponents or sectional opponents that you play on an annual basis to determine section seating. It makes the game more dramatic, but it may also lead folks like Gino Oriema to suggest uh, lowering the rim by 7.2 inches. St. Peter turns it over. Retzloff had Raymond on the entry pass down low, but the pass was too high for Raymond to handle. Nipper will try. This time puts down the three. And Thurow immediately calls timeout. 52-44 left. 
52-44 the score, I should say. 8.30 left in the contest. Nipper up to 18 points, has scored 11 in this half, and again, that includes an eight-point sprout, which makes the difference in our score. Kaminsky, a little more mellow in this half, but she's up to 14. Gunderson has nine to pace Miniha Academy. St. Peter still anchored by Raymond and Haas. Raymond up to 15 points, Haas at 13. Retzloff has seven, and those are your notables. The top players finding ways to produce. But Minnehaha has been more efficient with it. Retzloff doesn't have the agility for a breakaway shot there. Well, St. Peter will have to run from the half court. Gunderson with the poke and the coast to coast finish. Gunderson up to 11. Retzloff to Raymond. St. Peter trying to push. Growth with the block. And how about another for good measure? And Kaminsky will be called for the bump. I can't see, it looks like it's Kelsey Carpenter who took the brunt of the hit. It is on Kaminsky, that's her fourth personal. But right now the concern among everyone here is the well-being of Carpenter. Took a heavy collision from Kaminsky. Eight oh four remaining in the second half, and the Red Hawks leading 54-44. Both teams huddling now. Bob Southworth checking on his player. I'm not sure if she hit the bleachers as well. It happened very close to the spectator seating that you see. And I didn't get a full glimpse of it. We see she's sitting up now. That's a good sign. But again, when you play for loose balls, you're going at full speed. You don't necessarily see what's coming. And Carpenter getting back up. She may... Looks like she needed a moment to recollect herself. So she'll sit out for a few minutes, but looks to be okay. It's always a scary situation when two players collide. This isn't the full contact sport that football is, but you will still get collisions. Let's see if St. Peter can rally behind this. No, not from Retzloff. Raymond, short. Retzloff. Third time's a charm, and she takes a tumble. There's going to be a few bruises after this game as they head back to St. Peter. Retzloff up to nine. Minnehaha has the benefit of the clock. Traveling violation on Nipper. Raymond, bullseye. Raymond up to 18, and now it's a five point margin again. Gunderson finding growth, and St. Peter really spreading out the mini haha -ha offense. You have Nipper playing near that half court line. Usually don't see that in too many half-court formations. 
And good spacing by St. Peter in this 2-1-2 zone. They're not giving Minnehaha any looks. Red Hawks don't mind though. Again, both teams out of fouls to give, so Red Hawks will be happy to kill some clock here. Growth in trouble. Find Snipper. St. Peter fans wanted a traveling call. And St. Peter pitting them to the back, but now they find Warren, and she opts not to take the shot either. Minnehaha playing very conservatively here on this possession, and it pays off. Nipper draws the foul on Raymond, and again, both teams out of fouls to give, so we will shoot free throws from here on out. But of course, the second part of the equation is being clutch at the charity stripe. Shouldn't be a problem for the calm and confident nipper. And again, nipper had some talent the last couple of years with Caitlin Adams and Rachel Hansen, so she didn't have much pressure on her shoulders. Made both free throws there, but leading this team on another state tournament run perhaps. Gilreath on the steal for Minnehaha Academy. And once again playing deep to get some more spacing and milk the clock for all it's worth. 5.45 and counting. With no shot clock you have that luxury in high school basketball up here. Not so much in other states. But nobody was in the paint, and Raymond is going to get a fast break layup. That's the danger to being widely spaced out as they were. Raymond up to 20. Five point game again. This time Nipper drives and draws the foul again. The current formation, as you see, does two things. It makes passing up the middle difficult because nobody is there to haul it in, but it also leaves the paint open for a drive attempt. Well, Nipper's average will increase slightly after this game. Whether or not this gets her back into the top 10, we're not sure, but One of those games included just a three-point performance against uh, Mounds Park Academy in a game that Minnehaha easily won. Josh Thurow subbed her out so she could get four digits to her name at home. We have an offensive foul, or a loose ball foul, on St. Peter. That's on Carl's Ruder third, and so more free throws coming for Minnehaha. And that was one reason why Nipper's scoring average dropped but that was in the middle of a span of three games in three days, so. The move to bench Nipper had nothing to do with performance or perception. It was simply a matter of resting her during the team's busiest stretch of the year. Nipper with a little negotiation that time, but she has made the last six free throws. And the lead is back up to nine. Nipper proving clutch though. Raymond from the perimeter. They say Raymond only goes out there periodically, but her options to shoot from that range have proven highly beneficial for St. Peter. She's up to 23 points now as we have another timeout, 442 remaining. Sixty to fifty-four is the score, and even though Minnehaha is in control and playing that way, when you look at the tempo, they cannot relax just yet. Still, a lot of time for some crazy things to happen. Whether that would be a steal or a missed free throw, well, actually, Minnehaha is in the double bonus now. 
but it, they have to be careful. Especially with that elongated formation they've been running. 440 left. St. Peter with a little pressure now. Johnson in trouble. And Carpenter fouls Johnson. That may not be a bad idea when you calculate percentages, but Kelsey may have bailed out Maddie Johnson as well. That's a third personal foul because Johnson had used up the dribble and appeared to be under duress. Johnson splits, she's up to five. But St. Peter still with a lot of time. Long skip pass and I'd be very cautious about long skip passes against this mini ha, -ha defense that thrives on it. Retzloff can't get glass. Gilry with the rebound. And Retzloff will foul Gilry on the reach in. So more free throws coming. Again, it's double bonus time for Minnehaha Academy. The foul is the fourth on Retzloff. This is Gilreed's first trip. Hasn't factored much in Minnehaha's offense. Averaging a point and a half, roughly. And she splits here. Dead ball rebound to St. Peter as the attempt uh, sailed a little wide there, but that's all right. Minnehaha will take it. They're up to eight now. Their lead, that is. And four minutes on the clock. Once again, the long skip passes. That's the danger against its team that snipes him like Minnehaha does. And it results in a Gunderson layup that may be the metaphorical dagger. The lead is up to 10 again. Haas in trouble. And that was a tough shot, but Kelsey Carpenter on the rebound. Can't get it. Foul, then we'll shoot free throws. Well, both teams, I think, getting the conditioning they were looking for. They wanted to put each other on the schedule. St. Peter having some state tournament experience from a couple years ago, and Minnehaha, a regular participant. When you go back to the last five years, both in 2A and 3A. Carpenter makes both, which is good news for St. Peter, and the clock stops at 343. Nearly a double dribble for Minnehaha Academy, but they avoid it. Still have to be careful though, still some time here. They need to kill maybe a couple more minutes of clock before victory is theirs. Nipper will not drive unless she is absolutely sure this time. Kaminsky out on the floor with four fouls, but you're gonna put your best players out there now. And St. Peter getting a successful steal that time. Raymond will be hit, will get the blocking foul. I have thought Gilreath had her on the charge, but the official said she was not set in time. That's only her second personal foul. But Thurow doesn't agree with the call. And Thurow has some experience officiating himself when he's not coaching the girls basketball team. He will handle duties for boys basketball games. He spends his time as an official and on top of that, he's also the head coach of the baseball team. Foul is on Carl's route, so Nipper will shoot a pair. And Thurow got this job almost by accident. Lance Johnson was the head coach of the girls basketball team, but then he moved over to the boys. He'll call timeout, so this will give me a chance to pontificate further on how Thurow ended up with a state tournament title in his possession. 
Lance Johnson was the head coach, moved over to the boys' basketball team, so the girls' basketball team had an opening, and Thoreau was approached, and he accepted the job. He was the head coach of the baseball team at the time and decided to take on that job as well, and since then, he has added a state tournament championship to his trophy case. You know, there was that second place finish in 2011 in that short but intense rivalry with Bram. <laughs> to say this is a big free throw trip for Nipper is an understatement. St. Peter is down by six, 64. 58 with 306 remaining in regulation. Nipper has made her last six at the charity stripe. She is up to 24 points. And in high school basketball where free throw shooting is not as automatic as it would be in the pros or college level. There's one potential option in a team's arsenal for constructing a comeback. Carpenter, deep three, maybe a little too deep. The tactical game ramping up now. And Raymond going to step out. It looks like St. Peter is going to send in a quicker option. And they're going to play a little foul and chase here with 2.55 left. Oh, Gilreath back of the line. Gilreath with three points. And 2.55 less, still a lot of time left, but Minnehaha playing as if it's at the end of the game. Or I should say 25 seconds left as opposed to 2.55. Nobody at the line. Minnehaha is at this point only concerned about defending. Playing a prevent defense of sorts. They do not want to give up any fast breaks. Gilreath split anyway, so that was a moot point. Haas in trouble. Loses the ball, or I should say missed the shot. Nipper picks it up, used up the dribble. And Raymond forced to foul Kaminsky. That gives her four, and once again we see Minnehaha camping out deep in their own territory. Kaminsky misses the first. Thurl calls her their version of Tyus Jones, the brilliant point guard over at Apple Valley. And sure to be an All-American player. Kaminsky splits there. And it will certainly land a huge offer at a Division I school. Kaminsky has a couple of triple doubles on the season. Here's Retzloff. She got tripped up. Traveling violation. The official was on it. Took a little bunny hop there, and that cost her. And St. Peter continuing to play foul and chase. This time we'll see Rachel Warren go to the line. Warren averaging 8.3 points per game. Her season high is 13. Okay. Splits again, but Minnehaha slowly 
expanding their lead. It may be snail-like in nature, but the most important thing is the lead is increasing while time is draining. Lydia Kennedy looking to reverse that. She hits a tray. Up to six, 68-61 the score. But St. Peter's gonna have to play foul and chase again if they can't get a steal. And that's exactly what happens. Kennedy fouling Kaminsky and St. Peter running out of fouls among their players. Kennedy with their third and their roster not that deep with quality players. That's more common at the smaller schools. You know, you have a smaller population base. And even for the small schools in the Metro, you have the same thing because class size is determined by enrollment. So the smaller schools that are not going to have as deep of, a, deep of an artillery as schools like De La Salle and Hopkins might. Kaminsky hits both. 70 to 61. St. Peter playing under pressure now, and that just might do it. You got several players with four fouls, so they can't touch someone like Nipper, or they're out of the game. There's Kaminsky, and he, she's had a productive game as well. Had the big first half. Haas will be called for the foul on Gunderson. Had a big first half. And Nipper taking over in the second. That's Haas's third, but I think Minnehaha has reached their safety net now. And how about Gunderson? Doesn't waste any time with her free throws. 30 giving uh, Johnson a high five. Was happy about Gunderson there. She's up to 15 points. Gunderson who averaging 9.3 points per game. That will increase tonight. Haas posting up and getting past growth for the score. It brings her up to 15, but couldn't find many openings in the second half. Well, this will be a quality win for Minnehaha Academy as they take down a team that had won 10 of their last 11. Foul is Kelsey Carpenter's fourth. And St. Peter, a valiant effort on their part. And Nipper may be running out of energy now. But as you saw, she didn't, <laughs> she didn't sit much. And this was a game when she was needed most, and that is why Thoreau took her out in games where she wasn't needed, like that Mounds Park game. Because whether or not Minnehaha gets back to state, and, they've, and again, they've got a tough section ahead of them, Humboldt could give them a run. Raymond, how about that three-point proficiency? Here's the game high with 28, 59.1 seconds left. It's still Difficult pro for St. Peter's winning prospects, envisioning it, but it's still not impossible, but they would need a lot to go in their direction, especially as a lot of players sit with three or four fouls. But no matter what happens, this will go down as a very magnificent performance for Raymond, 28. I don't know if that's a season high, but if it's not, it should be close. Really took over in the second half. But Haas not able to post up like she had been. Again, I go back to that eight point burst on successive possessions for Nicole Nipper. And as we see in the margin, margin being seven, That sequence, the most influential, at least by my perception of this game. As Nipper had seven points, was doing okay, but not a significant threat. And after that, Minnehaha took control. They never lost the lead from that point. 
Foul is on Haas, her fourth. And Nipper. Nipper will try to pad her numbers. But her free throw touch dropping a little bit. And when she graduates, oh, she still has a decision to make. Misses both. That leaves an opening for St. Peter if they can get a shot here. But they need to get it quick, and they need it to be good. That was not what they were looking for. Chelsea Carpenter fouls out. She'll leave with four points. And the one player who was effectively neutralized tonight. Among St. Peter's top offensive threats. Morozek at the line, this is her first trip. Not much of a factor on offense and hits the second to get on the board, but they are still leaving the door open. St. Peter, though, not able to convert on offense and a foul on Minnehaha. That stops the clock. With 37.7. And again, we're still at that range where St. Peter will play foul and chase. So Haas going back to the line. Not the greatest of free throw shooters. And giving Minnehaha a bit of a break there. But the state tournament figures to be no different than what we're seeing tonight. Nicole Nipper weaves around the picket fence simply to kill clock and this should give Minnehaha the final cushion they need to take a seat with victory. Time running out, 15 seconds and Minnehaha has the win in their grasp now. They will move to 16 and six on the year. St. Peter will fall to 17 and five. St. Peter really can't foul because of the foul trouble they had. Nipper will run out the clock. And a well-played game. Minnehaha wins 74-67. And as we said, that eight point burst from Nipper proved to be the difference in the score. So quickly recap, Nipper leading the Red Hawks with 26 points, Kaminsky with 17, Gunderson with 15, those are your leaders. St. Peter, Olivia Haas with 16 points, the game high went to Taylor Raymond with 28, no other players reached double digits, Retzloff had nine, she was the closest. We'll see if we can get a word with a few of the players after a short break. You're watching high school girls basketball, Minnehaha wins 74-67. Mike Beaton here with Nicole Nipper of Minnehaha Academy. You had 26 points and perhaps the most influential sequence of the night when you had an eight point burst to give Minnehaha the lead for good. Uh, how did you pull that off? Two threes and two steals. I don't know. I, when things like that happen, I give all the credit to my teammates. There's no way I would have had those shots had it not been for my teammates. And um, you get to that point in the game where everything just kind of just happens and you're not really thinking, you're just doing. And um, that's what Thoreau has kind of stressed in our practices. Your head coach said that two years ago, your confidence was really established in the state tournament game against Sox Center, with, coincidentally was started with a three-point shot. How would you say your confidence has grown over the last couple of years? I would say that um, through experience in the state tournaments uh, from my freshman year on up, uh, it has just basically taught me 
what not to do and what to do in pressure-filled situations, especially with that Sox center game. I learned um, composure, and Thoreau has definitely um, helped me gain confidence throughout my career, and especially um, not just shooting threes, but driving now, which was something I didn't used to do. How nervous was that final minute? Because Minnie we couldn't quite close it out until those last few seconds where you drained the clock, but it was a little tense there. It, it was. Um, we, we were kind of just, we didn't need to focus on making our free throws, especially in, um, when we get those opportunities, we need to make our free throws. And uh, that's always something to work on. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but this was definitely a good game to practice section play and um, hopefully state tournament play. Well, and before that, you may have some more prep work. You've got the upcoming uh, conference tournament. The first year the Tri-Metro has held this type of playoff format. So how do you feel about being a guinea pig uh, for this conference? Um, I, I'm personally really excited. We get to play all the best teams from our conference. So we start with St. Croix Lutheran, hopefully on Friday. And um, we lost to them earlier this season, and we're hoping to get some a little bit of redemption on our on our court and hopefully pull out a win there. Now I've heard you've had some difficulty uh, in choosing what you'd like to do after college I, or after high school. I know you'd like to run a marathon eventually, but uh, you've been teetering between track, basketball, and all that stuff. So, what do you think is going to influence that final decision, and how difficult is it going to be to have to make one choice over another? Um, well, first off, it's going to be extremely difficult. Um, I'm between two schools as of right now, and uh, at both of them, I could run or I could play basketball. So um, I, I'm, I'm toying with Carleton College being my top pick right now. And uh, if I go there, there are options of what I could do. I could run and play basketball. I could do be a three-sport athlete. I could be a two-sport athlete, or I could just focus on one. Um, I'm not sure what the what the deal breaker will be, but um, I do love running and I do love basketball, and they're huge parts of my life. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough decision coming up. Well, there's always lacrosse that has a lot of running and uh, shooting. <laughs> yeah, not much of a lacrosse player can't really handle the stick. <laughs> <laughs> and is there anyone you want to say hi to that might be watching this? Um, I don't know. I just say hi to my parents. Well, you've got to get the parental shout-out, of course. Yeah, of course. That's kind of a must. And then my brother, who's in college right now. So, hi, Zach. Well, congratulations. Perhaps we'll see you again at state tournament. I know they've qualified the last five years. I'm sure you'd like to make it six. And uh, well-played game tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nicole Nipper of Minnehaha Academy. Mike Beaton here with Taylor Raymond of St. Peter. I know you came up a little bit short tonight, but 28 points, and uh, you showed a little perimeter range there. I think you were perfect <laughs> in all your threes. Uh, your coach said it was a periodic option of yours. Uh, that was more than periodic. <laughs> yeah, I don't really shoot threes very often. I've extended my game this year. This is the first year I've actually shot threes, con like, constant, not constantly, but in games a lot. So it's kind of nice to actually hit some and be able to shoot threes and post up because I've always played center before we got our big 6-2 post. So it's kind of nice to extend my range and be able to shoot everywhere. So it's harder for people to guard me. So tell me about that adjustment going from you know, strictly center to you know, having a little of those uh, skills we see in the WNBA with the uh, perimeter shooting post players. In the summer, that's pretty much all I do is shoot. My dad's a boys basketball coach and both my brothers, all they do is shoot threes. So. I work out in the gym all summer with them and they help me and it's just really nice to be able to shoot threes and 15, shot, 15 footers and everything because then people don't know how to guard me. So. How influential do you think uh, Nicole Nipper's eight point burst was as that gave Minnehaha the lead and uh, they never relinquished it after that point? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, she's a good player and for her to just go on a streak like that is great. and. For us, we couldn't stop her. I mean, she was dribbling, she was shooting, layups, passing. It's hard to stop someone when they can do everything. So, But uh, on the positive side here, the coach said uh, you, he and the, your team were excited to play Minnehaha to get a little bit of a prep work before section and perhaps a state tournament run. And so how do you think this game will prepare you for uh, an upcoming schedule where you may have to get through New Richland to uh, get back to state? 
I think it helped us a lot because we made the same mistakes over and over, which we know we can't do versus a good team like Minnehaha or the teams we're going to see in the playoffs. So it's nice to know what level we need to play at and how good we need to play to be able to beat these playoff teams or these teams during the playoffs. Now we normally don't see a lot of uh, schools from your area come up here in the metro, so uh, just tell us about the how the community responds to this organization. I've told like on double headers, uh, the gym is packed, and that you do a lot of uh, mentoring with uh, the younger kids out at St. Peter. So what's the basketball culture like out there? Our school pretty much revolves around basketball. I mean, we do basketball camps, fall, winter, spring, summer. We introduce the little girls and boys teams before pretty much every game. They get to come and run out between our teams and get introduced like their starter. And we, the boys have two honorary saints for each game. So they get t-shirts and they get to be announced and um, rebound for the boys during warm up. So, I mean, it's an all year thing. The crowd is packed. There's not even a spot for anyone to sit in the stands, which is awesome. The whole fan section standing up the whole game, it's cheering, they never sit down. So it's a nice atmosphere to be in, especially with our school. So. And on the flip side of that, what does it mean to kind of see some family you don't get to see all the time uh, making a visit out here in the metro? It's kind of nice because we don't play a lot of schools where my family's from. So, I mean, it was only a 15-minute drive for them. So it's nice to get to see everyone and that I don't get to see very often up here so and is there anyone you want to say hi to that may be watching this i don't know maybe my grandparents my grandma joe and papa dog they might be watching <laughs> hi i'm sure your dog will uh, your uh, any your your pop well, papa your papa i thought you said papa like oh. for okay <laughs> my grandpa. well if you have any pets i'm sure they're happy too Hope. <laughs> not yet that's that comes later yeah <laughs> might be watching but he had a game on the road so he doesn't get to make it to many of my games which is hard because him and my little brother are always on the same days as us so it's kind of tough but well, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure they're proud of I'm sure they're all proud of you no matter what and regardless of the scheduling you had a great game tonight and who knows we might see you back in state it happened two years ago it could happen again thank you very much Taylor Raymond of St. Peter that wraps it up from here Minnehaha wins for everyone here, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.